Hello, my name is Stefan Burns. I'm a geophysicist, and today I'm going to show you how you can process 1D active MESW data using Size Imager Surface Wave software. This is part three of the active 1D MESW training series that was done in partnership with Exploration Instruments and also ARM Geophysics. So we're going to process the data that we collected in the field. We had a 46 meter spread length and this is effectively the final result we're going to get to, a final shear wave velocity model, and we're going to process those four end shots that we took. So to start, you want to open up PICWIN. PICWIN is one of the size imager surface wave modules, and you just open that up. And we have four end shots to process. It's really simple to do in PICWIN. It's not complicated, and you start by going to File, and then you open up a waveform. So we'll open up waveform number one. And you can see here we had 24 channels. This was collected with the geode seismograph. Our sample time, our sample rate was 0.25 milliseconds. And our record length was about one second. So you hit OK. And you'll notice that it doesn't exactly scale properly, maybe first time. So you have these scale icons at the top there. Apologies that they're small. This is a 4K screen. So you can hit the cyan arrow there, the left one, to reduce the uh, x-axis, and then you can use these dark blue indigo arrows to reduce the y-axis or vice versa. So now you can see we have our x-axis going all the way out to one second, and we have our distance here. You can see this final trace at the bottom is at 46 meters. So our data doesn't really show up all that well, so we're gonna increase the gain on it, and that's why we have these green arrows. So green up increases the gain, and you also have major green up, which really increases the gain. So we'll do a major green down again, and we're gonna clip the traces. So we have CLIP there, clip them, makes it a little easier to read, and you can see our surface wave train here. So going all the way through there, and then spreading out in that direction, we have this nice, bundle of surface waves that propagated through our spread uh, due to the impact of the hammer on the strike plate. So this is just to show you how you can adjust your scaling and you can look at the data a little bit, but for the most part, you're gonna load in your data using file and then open, and then you're going to go to your surface wave analysis area here, and you're gonna click phase velocity frequency transformation. So you can just click that, and you're gonna to need to know your parameters. I already know them. For this site, the bedrock is pretty high velocity and it's near the surface. So it's gonna be 3000 meters per second for the end. Um, and then we're gonna do our end frequency as 50 Hertz. Uh, you can probably reduce it a bit for this data set, but just so you can see everything, we'll keep it to 50. Now, if you're processing data and you're not necessarily seeing a clean phase velocity dispersion curve, you should adjust this up or down as necessary as the scaling will impact how it looks. So we're gonna hit okay. And again, I'm gonna scale this down so it's easier to see. Do one there, one there. And I probably could have cut it off at 2000, but this is a really nice glimpse of the full thing. So you'll notice that we have this nice bundle there. We have a second mode that's popping up there, maybe even a third mode if this is the second mode. But this is a pretty clean, nice dispersion curve right there. And it looks like we lose it at these lower frequencies. When you do active MESW, it usually doesn't pick up lower frequencies as well. So for this data set, for the first end shot, we have four of them to process. For the first end shot, we're just gonna pick this nice dispersion curve right there. So to do that, you can start with the auto pick tool. So you go to surface wave analysis and you do pick phase velocity. Just click that. You put in your mins and your maxes and we'll just keep it at five and 50. And there we go. So this right here is this, that second or third mode, but this right here looks pretty nice. So we're gonna choose that. We'll go out there and you just, left click and drag it to get your picks in order. The auto pick tool is pretty nice, but I like to manually pick mine. It might take a little bit of time. 
uh, with the tool to get them exactly where you want. So just be mindful of that. And sometimes it spreads them out a little bit, but for the most part, it works pretty nicely. So there are our picks for number one, and you can see we have a couple there. I'm just going to delete. We have these ones. I'll delete out of the record, and I'll delete those from the record. But you delete those using Wave EQ, and Wave EQ is a different size imager software module. So to get to Wave EQ from PickWin, once you have your picks established for your end shot, your data file, you go to surface wave analysis and you do show phase velocity curve. So you just click that. This will open up Wave EQ and you check uh, which type of surface wave it is. This is a Rayleigh wave, hit OK. And no geographic coordinates for this data set. In this case, I'm just going to hit no. If you did want to put those in, that's a step that you would do. So now we have our dispersion curve here in Wave EQ. This is where you can create your geologic model. This is where you can get your actual VS30 uh, number from. And the first step we're going to do is delete these extraneous data points. So there's a few ways you can do that. I'll show the different methods across the different data sets. So the first one is to go to dispersion curves here and you can do delete picks outside of gate. So we just simply click that. Now you have a red gate and a green gate. The green gate's on the, on the right side here, as you can see. You can use your arrows to move the gates, your left and right arrows. And once you have your gate set, I'm gonna set this one for right here, the left gate, you just hit enter, and then you move your right gate using the arrow keys. And I can just move it there. If you want to do a very minor step over, then you hold down shift when you use the arrow keys. I'm holding shift right now. You can see it's just moving a little bit. Get it right to that junction. There we go. That is our dispersion curve. I'm going to adjust this view so the maximum is only 2000 and we'll have it look like this. So again, to adjust your view uh, scaling, this is important. Sometimes your dispersion curve might not fully show up. If your view is off, you just go to view and axis configuration and you can do that there. So this is looking pretty nice. We're gonna save this. So we'll save this as a 1D phase velocity curve uh, .rst file. And it's very important to have the .rst at the end of the file name or else it won't save properly. So we'll go to our staging area and we'll save it under dispersion curve and we'll call this just simply one because this was our first end shot. So one.rst, hit save, and there we go. We have processed our first end shot. We'll do the next four. So we'll exit out of here. We'll close and we'll close PickWin and we will simply open PickWin again in order to do the second one. So again, file open, hit number two, or whichever end shot you're on now. There's some information, same stats as before, hit okay. I'm going to adjust the scaling here. Scaling adjusted. Again, you can use those to kind of look at what the surface waves looked like. I'm gonna clip them, it's just a little easier to read. Looks nice. Now on this data file, we actually got some good low frequency data out of the shot. I don't know why, but we happened to get some good low frequency data. So, and I'll show you, uh, this, this analysis for this data file is a little more complex. So I'm gonna go through the full process. So again, surface wave analysis, you hit phase velocity frequency transformation, same stats, hit okay. We'll again bring this in using the cyan and the indigo there. Bring that up a little bit more. And you can see we have the same curve there at the bottom going to about 15, maybe 14 hertz, but there's a little bit of a better banding here. You can see right there in the color bar, some good banding. But I already know this because I've processed this data. So if you're just looking at this initially, you might think there's no uh, second layer, you could say, for to, to put fits on. So what I will show is if you really go through your data color scales, sometimes it pops up at different colors better than it would have otherwise. So I hit the major down uh, in terms of the amplification, and now I can slowly go up on the 
the single green arrow here. And you can see one, one key right there is that bar. This is all the showing amplitude data. This bar right there changed colors upwards. So that's a good data point right there. And then you can also show the fact that as you move up them, sometimes you'll get these perfect bands that tell you where you should put your picks. And we're seeing a fairly good area right there, kind of agrees with that earlier section that we saw. And you can keep going up through the different colors to really get that, that good analysis. Here again, you really see it on this one too. You see that section right there that shows up, which is nice. And going up even further, you see a nice band right there before it really starts to get wonky. So I'm fairly confident picking this data, this, this lower frequency data. It's just you have to go through the full um, color scale really sometimes to see it. So we're going to go to pick phase velocity. We'll have the auto picks. Hit OK. And you can see here, this is that nice region right there. We see the, the curve is pretty nicely set there. We get this jump up, but then we get this nice, it's banded there between a low and a low. And yeah, it starts to go crazy up there. That's just beyond our ability to pick it. We would need to have done a lower frequency survey, probably a passive MAM survey to pick up the lower frequencies at this site. But this area looks pretty good. So I'm going to pick it at this color scale and then I'm going to add in, um, I'm going to go through them later and refine it a bit. So just being right here, let's just go right there with a line, just like that. And let's clean this up a bit more. And you see we have that dot going through this higher gained area and this curve looks really nice already. So. That looks pretty nice. Let's go up the color and see how well it matches. There again, we, we see this nice uh, bar there, this nice banding. I might lop off one or two of these because I can't be fully confident in those values, but definitely some of this lower frequency, higher depth layer was captured with this shot. So again, we'll just go through and that looks nice too. We see that it's captured again pretty well. So utilizing the different color scales to really get a sense of this is very, very useful. And at this point, keep going up just a tad more until we get to the blues. Yeah, so that looks pretty good to me. We are now going to, yeah, this one shows it nicely too, right there, kind of see that. So we're going to now export this to uh, Wave EQ, just like we did with the first one. So shave, show phase velocity curve. And this, again, Rayleigh wave, okay. Coordinates, no. And here we are with our dispersion curve. There's another way you can delete picks, and that's by going to this red box with the white arrow in it. And you can click that and simply just drag over the, the uh, picks that you want to delete. Once they're highlighted red, you can just hit the delete key on your keyboard. And this is still selected, so you can drag over it and hit delete. If you mistakenly drag over, let's say, something you don't want to delete like this, you have to go to the white cursor here to select that and then select the box again, the red box with arrow, to reset it, and then you can hit delete again. So you can do that. And like I said, I'm going to delete those two right there. We just captured a bit of that deeper shear wave velocity layer, but that looks very nice right there. And simply save this as a RST file. Make sure you have that .RST on the side or else it won't be able to load. If you do mistakenly save it without the .RST, you can simply just rename it to have a .RST and then it'll load properly. So hit save. Again, we'll exit out of this. We'll exit out of this and we will reopen PicWin and we will now open our third file. These next two are pretty quick. I'm just going to jam through them. Uh, 
I believe you have the idea now of how to process these. And what we're going to be doing once all four of these are picked is I'll show you how to average them and then create that final model. So we'll do a phrase, uh, phase velocity frequency transformation, hit OK, bring that in, maybe, there we go, looks nice, and then pick phase velocity, same deal. Here we really capture some higher modes. You can see that we have this, this, and that. So you gotta be careful with how you pick this. Um, actually, this kind of looks good there, but considering all the higher modes that we're capturing down there, this roughly agrees with uh, the last file too. But the first thing to start is actually just to pick through there because that is uh, pretty nice. And we can go through the color on this one too and see what we get. You do see, like here especially, you see this nice band right there. So we can even, we can even choose that. And you see the nice neck right there. This is a, a nice constrained area, area where the shear wave velocity rises pretty quickly. So just to expand this out a bit. Yeah, and that looks pretty nice. So actually we captured it on two of the um, shots. I didn't notice this the first time, but it's showing up better this time. So we can, from here, go to show phase velocity curve, you know, relay, so on and so forth. This time I'll use the gates again, because it's very easy to do that. And yeah, I'm going to keep it right there, and then again, shift, arrow, arrow, there we go. We hit save. We'll save this as three. And once saved, again, just exit out. Last one, number four. File open. Here we go. And we'll spring these in a bit. Gain those up. Looks very nice. You just go to phase velocity transformation. If you get uh, off-end shots that this don't look good, let's say you do you take four shots and two are great and one is just really crummy, one's fair, you don't have to use all of them. Just because you did four end shots doesn't mean they all have to be used in the final dispersion curve that's averaged. So you can make that judgment call. That's why it's good to take more end shots than less. So here you can see the data quality really isn't as good. You can see this uh, increase to like second mode really high up here. It gets really wonky here in the lower frequencies as expected. So we'll go to pick phase velocity. There is some good data here. We can choose it, we can pick it out. We drag a, lot, a line across there and then we can also get our data going up here. But at around this mark, I mean, potentially, this is actually probably where it would continue here. Uh, we see if I can maybe gain that up, it's more obvious. Barely. It really didn't capture the data in that section well. So I'm just going to create some fake data up here that I can then delete later and wave EQ. And I'm just going to make sure I choose this really nicely because you always want to do your best. So this looks pretty good. Maybe more like, maybe more like that. And just get that last dot, maybe those last two dots up there. There we go. So that looks pretty nice. Uh, data set number four, not as great as the last two, but that's fine. So we can go to surface wave analysis and again, show phase velocity curve. Opens up wave EQ, Rayleigh wave yes. Geographic data, no. Again, I'll show you. You can take that red box, the white arrow, and just delete these values. And there, we're done. Hit save. This is our fourth dispersion curve. And we are now going to average these all. So we'll hit save on that. And at this point, we can actually just begin adding in the others. So I'm going to go to File, then Open. And I'll click number three. It's set to 1D dispersion curves there. And you have the option of doing new data or append to present data. So I'll show you actually what new data looks like. It just simply replaces your current data. 
nothing else happens. It just takes that file that you had and just completely replaces it with the file that you're opening. So we'll go to open, we'll go to four, we'll hit that. And now this time we'll append to present data, hit okay. And you can average it right here and that'll immediately average everything and just give you a single curve or you can keep it unaveraged. So I'll show you what averaging looks like. If you hit yes, this is now a, is a, an average result, but you don't want to average it if you have more than two dispersion curves, because if you have, let's say four dispersion curves, like in this video, if you average the first two, then they'll have more weight than the next one that you add on. So you want to make sure you add on all of them, don't average them and then average them simultaneously. So we'll go to the first one here, open new data, because we're wiping the slate clean. That's our first dispersion curve, open, number two, append, but not averaged. Now you can see it's overlaying these dispersion curves. File, number three, open, append, but again, not averaged. There we go again. Nice uh, similarities between off end shot two and off end shot three here, which is good. So it gives us some confidence that those are good picks. If you go to four, we can append, but again, not average. And that one just shows up at the bottom there. So now we have our four dispersion curves. If you want, you could save it at this point, but what we will do is we'll go to our dispersion curve venue here at the top, and we will simply just click average same frequency data. So you just click that. Now you have your average curve. And if you wanted, you could clean this up a little bit. I mean, we get a little dip right there, then an up. That's probably not how it actually works. You could do that, you could smooth it, and that might smooth out. Or if you wanted, you could simply just click that. Uh, I didn't click it fully, I guess. You could just simply highlight that value, delete it, and there you go. This looks pretty good to me. I'm happy with this result. Let's look at it now with the apparent velocity model. This is in the menu here. It's the VR right there, click, there it is. And there is our apparent velocity model. We can bring in this scale so it's a little easier to see. And to do that, you go to view, axis configuration, we'll set this Y axis to 50. So there we are, looking good. Hit up arrow and we can bring this, maybe make it a little bigger or keep it just the way it was, which was very nice before. So. This is our apparent velocity model. From here, you can kind of see what depth you need a model to. We're seeing 40 meters there. If you're working in feet, then you can have the scaling all in feet. It doesn't matter when you're processing the data, whether it's in feet or meters. So this was all collected in meters, but even if this was in feet, and that should actually say 40 feet, it wouldn't have affected the data. All you'd have to do is go to options here, dimension, no, or not dimension size, options, and then feet and feet per second. And now it changes to feet. So this was in meters, so we'll put it back on meters, but just so you see that and get the, the right values. And from here, we go to MASW, MAM, 1D, right there, and we just go to initial model. Initial model is uh, going to be 40 meters, and we'll keep it at 10 layers, hit OK. There we go. And we'll bring in this uh, also to 1600. So we go to view axis configuration and make that 1600. Looking good. Yeah, I liked it where it was right there. And from here we could do a, uh, we'll, we'll actually check uh, our, our RMSE value. So you go to display, here's our VS, and we actually see our pre-iteration average VS30 is 639 meters per second. And if you go to display DISP1, this shows the dispersion curve. And if you hit the star, you'll calculate the theoretical dispersion curve. So we'll hit the star to calculate, calculate the theoretical. And we see our uh, root mean square error has a uh, you know, a value of 84 meters per second for this type of site where it was a very high velocity bedrock uh, near to the surface. This is like a, a hard shale in central PA. Then this is actually a very good value to get. 
So we'll tighten that up a little bit by doing five iterations. So you go to the 1D uh, file menu here and you can do inversion and perform, this is the least square method, five iterations, you can hit OK. Inversion complete. Now we have a new model and if we go back to display, we'll see our RMSE has reduced. You don't want to do too many inversions. I usually keep it to five. Very rarely I'll do 10, but I think this looks just fine. So again, we'll go back to VS1. We also hit save. We'll save our work and we can just cut, type this in as um, VS40 model because it we got it to 40 meters so and at the bottom there shows the average vs30 that's an option that can be toggled uh, I don't remember yeah so you can actually go to view and if you don't have that already enabled you just go to show avs for IBC click that off it goes away click it back on there it is so last thing we're going to do is we're going to edit this velocity model so these layers are more accurate uh, because a lot of people will read the side here and they want to uh, get values for the different layers. So to edit the velocity model, you go here and you have the edit velocity model C, I think that's a C, CV button. Then you have edit velocity model boundaries there, add a layer, and then you can also exit the current editing mode. So we'll hit CV and we'll see that these pop up. And from here, I can actually drag these, and I like to drag them right to the dot. So drag that one there, and that's usually kind of the first step I do is to drag them to the dots. But I also like to change the boundaries to kind of line up with the dots. So you'll see what I mean in a second. The inflection points for this is where I, I alter it. So that one doesn't need to be high, this one though can be a little higher like that. And maybe I just bring that guy out. Okay, so this looks pretty good. If we can edit the, the boundaries here by clicking the CB button. And for this one, overall this model looks pretty nice. I'm actually going to move this boundary out a bit to count for that connection through there. Um, but what I really wanted to do was to drag, oh, I can just drag that one up actually. There, that looks nice. This, we have this nice block here of data. Uh, so now we know what that VS value is. It's 1,278. And then each one of these has their own layer. We can reduce. Um, I would like to take this layer out. You can simply just kind of bring it into the center there. So you can play around this model, make it look really nice. You can add layers at certain inflection points. I haven't really needed to with this data set, but that looks pretty nice. I like to screenshot this and you can use that for reports or whatever. But at this point you can hit file, you can save it again, and you could save it as BS model final dot RST because I clicked it over. So we'll hit save. And that is how you process active MESW data using size imager surface wave software. I hope you found this training series useful. Again, I've been your host, Stefan Burns. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. We'll be happy to help you further. And if you need help with your data processing or you're running into, let's say, any support issues with your geode or atom size graph or size imager, you can contact us at uh, support at geometrics.com. That's S-U-P-P-O-R-T at G-E-O-M-E-T-R-I-C-S dot com. So we look forward to hearing from you. We hope you found this useful. Special thanks to Exploration Instruments for providing the seismic equipment used during the field training day. And now for a quick word from their senior geophysicist, Jeff Lieberfinger. My name is Jeff Lieberfinger. I'm the senior geophysicist um, an operations manager for Exploration Instruments out of their Harrisburg, um, Pennsylvania office. Exploration Instruments provides rentals um, across the country and we have a very large inventory of equipment. Um, so it lets us uh, 
provide the systems that are most appropriate for um, whatever the project or the, the application. And one of the things that I'm very proud of with Exploration Instruments is that we have a great team of technicians and technical um, people that can support our customers. And um, you know, that's really important when they're having trouble in the field um, with something and our technicians can talk them through those issues and get them back up and running. I'm glad to have geometric support to develop this training video. Uh, ARM group um, who Exploration Instruments has a very good relationship with and are very talented and experienced um, geophysicists and um, the EXI staff from Pennsylvania office who are here also to support. Thank you for watching this 1D Active MASW training series. You can rent geometric seismographs directly from Geometrics or from Exploration Instruments.